going on guys this is ashley keaton just ashley keaton reporting for duty um i was looking at the anthony rogers versus brandon tatum debate and i'm not gonna lie i don't I, obviously my position is different than both of theirs i really thought that i was going to agree more with the trinitarian than i was brandon tatum i really did and i gotta hurry up because i have to have a prayer meeting i have to get into so hopefully this is gonna be kind of quick so but I just had to say this. I had to respond to this video. I think it is so crucial and so important to respond to this. Reason why. First, I'm sorry, um, Anthony Rogers and, you know, a lot of other scholars and, and Greek, you know, people have studied the Greek for years and years and years. I can't get past the fact that you guys just put so much emphasis on these scholars. I'm just being, I'm telling you the, the facts. David K. Bernard wouldn't disagree with me here. These what? are the scholars that everybody has to look to and, and talk, you know, if we're going to talk about what reputable scholars are. The fact is, and I can prove it to you. I, can I agree it. with you. The, you the fact them, is, I'm using them. There, there's no such thing as a plural of majesty in Hebrew with respect to verbs and pronouns. Go look at uh, Emil Rodiger, Gesenius, uh, 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 Gerhard Hazel, an Old Testament scholar, uh, Taylor Lewis, an Old Testament scholar. They all tell you there's no such thing as a plural of majesty with respect to verbs and pronouns. I will never make my case. Please name me one scholar that views it the way that you just said. Like, that's not an argument. This would be like saying, well, you know, this scientist believes in uh, Darwinism, the, the theory of, you know, macroevolution. I can't get jiggy with that, man. We are putting way too much emphasis. I mean, I look up the commentaries. I do. I watch every, I watch these guys' video. I will never, ever say, oh, look at what he said. What are you going to say about that? Like, no, 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 no. I have to use the scholar. If I'm going to reference the scholar, it's it's not even necessarily me, me saying that, oh, because they said it and they studied for so long, it has value. That doesn't mean anything to me. How long you've been studying. We've all seen people that have been studying years and years, decades, and have totally different views. Because um, he calls the word an inanimate object. I think there is some weight in that statement. I'm, I'm going to keep you a disclaimer. I, I do not view the Godhead the way that Brandon Tatum, Brandon Tatum does. I view it like David Bernard. I, I have the oneness belief. And, it, it, you know, it's, it just sounds so much like when Brandon Tatum explains the Godhead, it just sounds like he is explaining oneness. Um, but he keeps saying the son is not God. And I... I I would, it's, it's kind of difficult because in a sense, I can agree. If, if he's talking about, okay, like the veil that Jesus put on, that veil is not God. But what is in that veil is God. The visible image of the invisible God. The visible image is not God. But the invisible God is that is inside of that image, the veil that is on top. It's like saying that God is the flesh. Like, no, God is not the flesh per se. Like when it says the word made flesh, it's like that flesh is what it was made into. Um, when God, 1 Timothy 3, 16, when God was manifest in the flesh, it was God manifested in the flesh. The flesh, I would argue that the flesh is not him, but he just put it on. The word made flesh, he called that the sun. The word, he didn't call the word the sun. He never called the word um, Jesus. So when he says the word is an inanimate, inanimate object, I would just say, okay, the word is the word is the word. You know, I, I'm not going to say the word is Jesus. I'm going to say that the word, and this is where it gets technical. I'm going to say the word was made flesh and God called that Jesus. But when I say he called it Jesus, this is a movement of salvation. He, everything, you know, um, El Shaddai, um, you know, he, he has, what is it, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah Jireh. He has names 
that he gives himself when he makes a movement. You're going to have a lot of different persons and a lot of gods if you view it this way. But just I'm not even going to get into all that today. I, I just want to say the scholar thing that, that we have to be careful of. And, and I see it so much. And I'm not going to. I thought Brandon Tatum was a oneness apostolic Pentecostal Christian. That's what I thought he was because he, he made this video not uh he made this video kind of recent, you know, not too long ago that he was baptized in the name of Jesus, received the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in tongues. Never forget going to Emmanuel Grace Apostolic Church. That little bitty church in uh, South Tucson was amazing. The first time I showed up at church, I felt like I was at home. People were amazing there. And for the first time in my life, I heard the gospel preached. And I'll never forget what he said to me. He, he, he knelt down, and I'm on the ground praising God and just worshiping. And he said, you must be baptized in the name of Jesus. And, 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 and I was so on fire for God. I said, come on, take me to the water. I went and got baptized that day, baptized in the name of Jesus. And three days later, I got the Holy Spirit. And I'll never forget Elder Danny Field. Never forget her. She reached over to me and she said, tell God what you want. Tell him what you want. And she read me the scripture of, you know, seeking you shall find, knocking it shall be open unto you. And I said, I want the Holy Spirit. And not too short after that, the Holy Spirit came and I started speaking in tongues. I'm just, I'm just saying. So I'm like, how did you get that Jesus is not God from an apostolic church? A small apostolic church how did you get that is that what they believed i've never seen an apostolic church that believes that jesus is not god that goes off the apostolic doctrines I, I don't know maybe this is something that has been around and i just missed it but yeah so that's my thoughts on it i i think that the debate it just kind of it kind of went all over the place in a sense I, I i just really wish you know when the guy says you know i hope you like animated conversation you know, and that's cool because he's trying to be nice. But at the same time, that can that can cause a problem depending on how you do it. You don't want to just keep talking and talking and talking and, and, and just call it, you know, this is your personality. No, 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 no. If it was Dr. James White, he wouldn't have talked over him. But this guy has a way of, and I respect him, he's cool. Um, but I, I, he has a way of speaking a little too much, not letting, you know, Brandon Tatum, he's always... Okay, okay, okay. He's being respectful, but he, he can't get any points out. I, I wanted to ask Brandon Tatum certain questions. Like, what do you think it means when it says, um, 1 Timothy 3.16, God was manifested in the flesh? What do you think it means when he says the word became flesh? You know, and he never asked any of those questions. He just said, the scholars disagree with the Greek. And I'm like, I don't care about the scholars. I want to know what the truth is. Explain to me what the Greek is. You know, he went into it, but I just hated when he, he kept saying what the Scott bump the scholars. OK, just talk about the Bible. Just bring me like David Bernard says in his debate with the um with the Trinitarian, like way back in the past years ago. Well, I think, first of all, it's important to establish that we look only to the Bible as our source of doctrine. And so we ask to be judged. Uh, on the basis of Scripture. We consider ourselves to be Orthodox Christians on the basis of the New Testament teaching, and uh, any other creed or historic statement by some figure is not uh, a valid grounds for judging Orthodoxy. He said, I don't want to be viewed based on what others have said about the church. The scholars have said this, they said this, they said that, and they said, he said, I don't want to be judged, my, you know, my belief. I don't want my belief to be judged because of what, you know, other people said. Let's base it just on scripture. And I'm telling you, that's why I follow David Bernard so heavy because he's like, all right, let's look at the source. When you want to know if a religion is bad, you look at the source, right? When we, but yeah. That's my take on it, guys. Like I said, we got to use sola scriptura, like James White says. And I think he does a, a decent job at doing it. You know, that's my opinion, but I still don't agree with him on the Trinity. But yeah, comment, like, share this video. Let's get into this conversation. Let's figure this out. 
I'm reading The Forgotten Trinity by Dr. James White. I'm going to do a commentary on that. Uh, a lot of stuff I got to talk about. A lot of stuff. Okay, it's crazy. But look look in the description. With that, I'm going to send the original video down in the description for the debate with uh, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron Rodgers and, and Brandon Tatum. Oh, yeah, guys. God bless you.